All right, we are live from this point, and we should be live on the page right now, and we'll be going in the group in a second, but you can definitely take it away. Right on. Noelle, are you starting us off? How are we doing this? I sure can. So we're talking today with Michael Hellickson. Do you want me to do your introduction, or do you <laughs> have that down? Do you have a 60-second elevator pitch that you can give us? A 60-second? How about a 30-second elevator pitch? <laughs> How's that? Uh, so for those of you that don't know who I am, uh, which is probably most of you, I, uh, I sold real estate for just over 20 years, ran the number one team in the country, was very consistently listing and selling over 100 homes a month. And at one point in time, had over 750 listings in active and pending status. Uh, and uh, so now I own a company called Club Wealth. We're the number one coaching company in the team space. So we represent more and bigger teams than any other coaching company on the planet. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, we're the only ones that offer a double your income money back guarantee, whereby if you don't make at least an extra $100,000, your first year coaching with us, we'll give you your money back. There you go. Noel, you've got to mute out your Facebook tab. Uh, and, uh, I don't uh, think so it's me. I, well. I think that's Dan. Is that Dan for reals? Hang on, let's see. Dan, you got to mute that out, brother. There we go. All right. Good stuff. Okay. So anyway, there was, there was, that was the 32nd elevator pitch. How's that? I didn't know about the money back. I didn't know yeah. about that. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're all about risk reversal. I and mean, here's the thing, obviously, you know, if somebody's going to take advantage of the money back guarantee, they've got to actually, you know, show up for work, right? They got to do some stuff. Uh, but I'll tell you this, uh, we've literally never not once had anybody ask us for their money back. Not once. <laughs> The fact of the matter is, we got a lot of people doubling, tripling, and then once in a while, even quadrupling their income with us year over year. Uh, and very consistently, we're taking people from 30 transactions a year to, you know, 400 transactions a year. That's, uh, that's not uncommon. Yeah. So anyway, that being said, so today we're talking about personal notes. And it's interesting because... You know, people talk about all this new technology and it's got to be video this and, and pixel that and blah, 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 and all the, all the new stuff out there. And then they keep getting even further off into the deep end. And it's all these little things, right, uh, that, that they think are going to represent these big, big numbers. And here's the reality. The reality is old school still works. In fact, virtually 80% of all the business that's done right now is coming from old school techniques. Uh, the reality is that these other techniques are either ways to augment or enhance what we're doing with the old school stuff, or uh, they're simply accessing some of the other, you know, 10 to 20% of the stuff that we're not already accessing. But the reality is, uh, even with millennials, and I know that's kind of the buzzword, right? Millennials. Uh, even with millennials, the reality is they still appreciate the old school stuff uh, and it's, uh, it's still bringing those transactions to the table. So what we really got to look at is not, is it new school? Is it old school? What we got to look at is, is it going to bring me ROI? Am I going to make money with it? Is this going to help me get to the promised land? Because isn't that a lot more important than, you know, am I on the cutting edge? Uh, and so it just, it cracks me up because everybody wants to be on the cutting edge. And I'm just like, dude, really? Well, you could be on the cutting edge. You'll probably just get cut, right? Like that's probably what's going to happen if you're too focused on the cutting edge. <laughs> Is that crazy? Well, and I, I totally agree with you. Um, although some of the things that I am doing may be <laughs> the opposite of what you just said, right? Well, okay. But look at where 80% of your results come from. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so the stuff like your videos and stuff like that that you're doing, that's very good stuff. And what that does, the way that you're using your video is to stay in front of your sphere of influence. Yes, you're capturing some new clients, but the reality is that what you're really doing is you're enhancing the other things you do. I'll give you an example of this. So I used to spend about $40,000 a month on TV and radio. And we got good ROI on TV and radio, but where we really got the ROI on it was not direct result response. Where we really got great ROI on it was it made all the other stuff we were doing more effective, right? Mm -hmm. Now, there, there's a difference between being efficient and effective. Really effective is does it work, right? So let's talk about that for a minute. So if I'm on TV or I'm on radio, all of a sudden all these people out there are hearing me or if I'm on video on Facebook, social media, whatever, it's all the same thing, right? If I'm on mass media channels, what's happening is people are seeing me. They're getting that exposure, which is important, right? They need to see me seven to 10 times begin before they even begin to know, like, and trust me. Um, and so it helps me get those contacts in. 
but in essence, what it really does is it, it makes the other stuff I'm doing work better. So that doesn't abdicate me or abdicate my responsibility or absolve me of the responsibility or need to get out there and make phone calls, do personal notes, you know, reach out to my clients in person once in a while, do client events, all these things that we do to ensure that I'm not only capturing stuff from my sphere of influence, but that I'm bringing in business from other sources as well. And I think the single biggest mistake that most agents make is thinking that they can get away with one or two lead sources and have a great business forever. Well, that's just hogwash, right? Like that's just, you're just asking for trouble. Um, so <laughs> what you've got to do is you've got to spread out those lead sources uh, and you've got to make sure that you've diversified to the, to the not, not so much that you're not doing anything effectively, but to the point that you're getting enough business from different sources that as the market shifts, for example, as we come into a declining market, referral-based business declines with the declining market. In fact, in excess, the speed of, in which it declines is in excess of the speed at which the market declines. Why is that? Because nobody calls their buddy up and says, hey, Noel, uh, you know a great real estate agent? Because if I don't find, sell my house in the next couple of months, they're going to foreclose on it. Like nobody says that, right? That's never going to happen. Nobody does that. What do they do? Oh my gosh, honey, we're going to get foreclosed on. Don't tell the friends. I don't want anybody to find out. Like, I don't even want them to put a sign in the yard because, oh my gosh, what if somebody finds out that we're in trouble? We don't want that. You know, we need to maintain our Facebook life, right? We need to maintain our, our Facebook profile so that people think we're successful and life is easy for us. Uh, and that's, that's what happens, right? So they avoid it completely. So one of the tools that we use, sorry, were you going to say something? I'm totally no, rambling. No, okay. no, I'm just listening. It's all true. One of the tools that we use, and it's not just for our referral based business, for, but for business in general, one of the tools that we use to deepen and establish better relationships are personal notes. Now there's a lot of misconceptions about personal notes. People like to overcomplicate it and some people like to oversimplify it. So we're going to talk about the sweet spot in the middle, right? We're going to talk about how do I do personal notes both effectively and what that means is so they work and as well as efficiently and that means so I spend the least amount of time possible doing it because I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours pounding out handwritten notes. It's a lot of freaking work, right? Yeah. So let's first talk about how do I, and by the way, those of you, what I'd like to know if you're, I'm on the, I'm in lab coats right now uh, on their feed. And so if you guys are watching live on the feed, I want you to type in your comments. How many of you are actually using handwritten personal notes right now? How many of you in the last 60 days have written at least one handwritten personal note? And if you have just type in, I'm writing personal notes. If you haven't, I want you to type in no personal notes for me or something of that nature. I just want to get a feel for how many of you are doing this. And I see we've got comments coming in here already. Um, so get typing. That being said, and ideally type it into the Facebook post in Lab Code Agents uh, where we're live right now. That being said, here's the deal. Let's talk about how to be more effective with the personal notes. So we're going to talk about the system for what should that note look like. Now, there's lots of different ways we can do this, right? And what I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that there's physically handwriting it. You can buy machines that will handwrite it for you, or you can sign up for like send out cards, right? And send out cards is a great alternative. That being said, the number one, we're going to start at the top. We're going to start at the highest and best thing that I can do, which is literally personally grabbing a pen and literally personally handwriting the note, right? Because people know, even if it looks like it's, you know, even if a machine did it, People know it was a machine, right? They can tell. And it's, I'm not saying that's a terrible way to go. It's an, it's an acceptable alternative, but it's still not the best, right? I'll give you an example. It's like when you go on a date, right? And, you know, you have this great date, but then you realize, and Noel, you'll probably appreciate this. You realize that, you know, you really wanted to go out with his brother more than him. And it's <laughs> like, you know, like. I actually did have that happen. I see? Did. There you go. There you go. And did you marry the brother or did you marry the one that you should have gone out with? Neither. <laughs> oh, neither one of them. Okay. So you didn't settle, right? But using, using a machine feels like you're settling at some level, right? And so ideally, we don't prefer to do that. That being said, if you get to a point in your business where you're uber successful and you just don't have any time whatsoever, then certainly using a machine or using send out cards are great alternatives. But we're going to talk about what if you're going to do it personally. So here's the system. Let's start with this. First and foremost, I want you to write five personal notes every single day. Five. Don't go crazy. It's great if you write 10. I see Michael Sarl says he's handwriting uh, personal notes. He's doing 10 per day. I love that, Michael. That's fantastic. Good for you. You and George Bush, right? George did this. I'm talking senior here. 
Uh, George Bush Sr. used to write notes. To, and I don't care what your political leanings are. The guy got elected president of the United States of America. He knows a thing or two about connecting with people, right? Or fit, somehow he got elected. So that being said, he used to say he'd write notes to the guy putting up chairs at the events that he was speaking at, right? Anybody he could. He didn't care who he was writing the note to as long as he could build a connection with them. And he did a very good job of that as they have a lot of other world leaders as well. Now, five per day. So how do I make sure that I'm gonna get five notes per day in? Well, first and foremost, you gotta automate as much of this process as possible. And here's what I'm talking about when I say automate. Uh, I want you to literally get your assistant to handwrite the envelopes. So I'm gonna use the little square envelopes. I used to, I usually have a pile, oh, here we go. I've always got a little pile of handwritten personal notes on my desk. And by the way, for those of you that have sent me notes, I wanna thank you, look at this. I got all kinds of personal notes here. I got cards, I got postcards, I got all the, I wanna thank you guys for writing me personal notes. This is like this week. Uh, and I appreciate this a lot. Keep them coming, I read every single one of them. I may not get a chance to respond to every one of them, but I want you to know, I personally read every single note you send me. Check it out. Do I read every email that's sent to me? Heck no. But I do read the personal notes that are sent to me. I want you guys to think about that. How powerful is a personal note, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you that a lot of leaders in our country today are, they're reading personal notes, but they're not reading all their emails. Even their text messages or Facebook messages are usually handled by an assistant. You mean like that 80,000 some emails, the, that, yeah. that, that thing right there? That. 83, was that 83,000? 83,447. Oh my gosh. And watch this. Noelle, how many personal notes have you received in the last 30 days? Maybe like two, actually. I think I have received a couple. <laughs> okay, now watch this. Did you read them? Absolutely. They're probably still sitting on my desk somewhere around here. Right? Right. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. So not only did you receive them and you remember who sent them to you, right? Yep. yep. You remember who took the time to send them to you. You read them word for word and you still even have them on their desk, which your emails, yeah, they're still in your inbox unread, and the chance of you ever reading them are about zero, right? And so, you guys, here's what it comes Actually, to. here's one sitting on my desk. See? Right <laughs> See? That's what I'm talking about. You guys, these things are powerful, right? And so what you do is you take your, and you have your assistant go through and handwrite the, the, person, the, the envelope, right? And put, now this one, I would rather see, this one doesn't have it. It does have a first class stamp, which I really like. Very important to have a first class stamp because, you know, this does not look like it's a business sending this out. It's a colored envelope. It's, you know, this is perfect. This is what you want. You don't want it to look professional. You want it to look personal. Um, and so first class stamp, uh, it's not, you know, metered postage or anything like that. Now, what would have made this even better is if there was like a, a return address label in the upper left-hand corner, or if it's handwritten in the upper left-hand corner. I actually personally prefer the goofy labels, like a Snoopy label, right? For those of you that remember, you know, peanuts with, you know, Charlie Brown, you know, put the little Charlie Brown label on there because nobody's going to, that, that, no business in the world would send something out with a Charlie Brown label on it, right? So what do people do? They're like, oh, I wonder who sent me a persona. Oh, look, they like Charlie Brown. That's cool. I like Hello Kitty. How cool. So they open the note up, they read the note, right? So yes, first and foremost, get it noticed. Then you got to get it then you got to get it read. Okay. So all these things will help. So my assistant every single day is going to handwrite five of these person, these, these envelopes, and she's going to stick the card in there. So I'll see the envelope that tells me who it's going to. If there's a particular reason why I need to send it to them, my assistant can even go through and write just a little post-it note, stuck, stick that right on there and say, here's the reason why I'm writing this. Uh, and by the way, I'm, I'm tagging Gail. I see that you're in the uh, conversation here. I'm tagging you in the post so you can comment in the live post. Um, and I'd love it if the rest of you did that as well. Uh, that being said, now I, she puts five of these things on my desk. So if I don't write them that night, if I don't get to those notes that night, what happens the next day? What do you think, Noelle? Then you got to double it. Then she goes and she puts five more on my desk. So now I've got five more personal notes. Now I'm up to 10 personal notes on Tuesday. Wednesday rolls around. I haven't written any of my personal notes that week. What happens Wednesday? Triple. She puts five more on my desk. Now I'm at 15. Next day she puts five more. These just keep piling up until I finally sit down and write my personal notes. And before long, you start getting the habit of writing your personal notes every single day. I love it. Heather Gagnon saying that she writes two personal notes every single day. That's awesome. 
Uh, and by the way, Heather, I would rather see you actually continue the habit of writing two personal notes a day than to set a goal of writing five, do it one day, and then not do anything for a week, right? It's better to have consistent habits on a daily basis, no matter how large or how small, do some activity on a daily basis. All right. we, do have, we do have some people commenting in the watch party. One oh, person good. Said okay. That they are using send out cards, and another yes. person said that they are using AM cards. Okay, so I'm not familiar with AM. What's that? I haven't heard of that either. AM cards. I haven't either. I would love it if you could connect me with whoever owns the AM cards. I will research it. I'll have it. We've got a whole department. They'll go through and they'll vet it and they'll see, you know, what, what the scoop is on AM cards. I'd like to learn about it. Now we do use um, send out cards. We like them a lot, um, but they're for a little bit different purpose. A lot of times those are usually for us. They're more automated. They're more, you know, specific events that happen on a regular basis where we want to make sure the stuff goes out in an automated fashion. Um, but specifically, I still want to see five handwritten personal notes each and every day, uh, it, ideally. Now, how do I write the note? How I write the note, what goes into the note actually makes a big difference. This is important. So write this. And by the way, if you guys want to see, I've done a blog post on this. If you want to see our checklist for how to do personal notes, everything that's included, literally just go to clubwealth.com forward slash personal notes. Uh, I'll even put it in here. It's www.clubwealth.com forward slash personal oops, notes. Make sure I got that right, and there you go. All right, so you get the free download there. That being said, here's what goes in the note. This is really important, you guys. I wanna make sure that it's three to five lines, no more. Like, don't write a freaking book. Three to five lines, blue ink. Okay, write these things down, you guys. Three to five lines, blue ink, broad-tipped pen if you've got one. Ideally, it should be a broad tip pen. And here's the thing. I didn't make this stuff up, you guys. Smarter people than me figured this stuff out, right? I just freaking stole it. I'll call it what it is. And you can steal it from me, right? And so what does that mean? What does this look like? Essentially, when I do this, oops, hang on. And okay, so I'm getting an error when I tried to post and they're unable to post my comment. What happened? I don't know why it's not letting me post the comment. Um, anyway, that being said, here's what's going to happen. So it's three to five lines, blue ink, broad tip pen. I want to write a very concise note. The blue ink shows trust. I don't know why this is. They've done studies on color, but for whatever reason, blue ink is a trust color. So it's going to increase your automatic trust level with the people. Next, you're going to use a broad tip pen. Broad tip shows power. Okay. If you use a fine point pen, it's weak, right? It's submissive. We want fat, powerful, boom, here it is, right? Like we want... A really solid personal like note. Like the solid handshake versus the, you know. The dead fish, right? The limp yeah. fish. Yeah, exactly. Don't do the limp fish, right? It's, <laughs> it's a Norwegian thing. We don't like that. All right. So that being said, don't, Noel knows all about the Norwegian. So <laughs> they, you give them the limp fish, they're like, oofta, why am I talking to this person? <laughs> <laughs> so that said, we're going to do, you know, we're going to do blue ink, broad tip pen, three to five lines, Okay. Because again, we want it to get read. And then I want you to start it with, the, first of all, you're going to put their name in there, but at the very top of the note, this is important. This is something most people don't do, but you really should. At the top of the note, what I want you to do is I want you to put the day, date, time, and location of where you were when you wrote the note. Now, I know this sounds a little bit crazy, but I want you to think about this for a second. When you put down, you know, it's 5.45 p.m., uh, you know, Bonnie Lake, Washington, Tuesday, January 5th or whatever, you know, you've got all that in there. All of a sudden the note takes on a different meaning for them. They're thinking to themselves, oh my gosh, on Tuesday, he was sitting, you know, at Club Wealth World headquarters writing me this personal note and it starts to become more real for them. Right. And so that's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to build connections, right? We're trying to build relationships. Um, and so we want to show them as much of this detail as we can. All right. Then uh, I want to end it with a unique close. And I cannot say this enough. Stop with the freaking sincerely and cordially or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you stop that crap, right? Do something unique, right? Like say, you know, reach for the stars, make it a world-class day, you know, crush it, you know, something that you would say that sounds like you, that you would use on a regular basis, but it better not be sincerely or respectfully or any of that garbage because that sounds too professional. <laughs> right? So this is a personal handwritten note. Okay. So questions. What are, what are your thoughts so far, Noel? Oh, Noel, your video. Oh, 
How about hashtag be blessed? There you go. Hashtag be blessed. Like if you, if that's your thing, if that's something you say all the time, then do it. It's you, right? That's exactly <laughs> what I do. Whatever your thing is, do it. Uh, but make it your thing. That's the thing because people will know, oh my gosh, this was actually Noelle and it wasn't somebody that works for her that wrote this. And right. to them, it's a big deal, right? Or if there's some kind of personal connection between you and them that you can reference in the card, but oh. then they know it's not made up by somebody else that you actually wrote it. Because That's what happens, they're going to call you back and say something about it. If you don't remember what you put in there, Awkward. That's exactly right. No, that's 100% correct. 100% exactly right. Uh, it'll look like Gail says she's doing live today, enjoy life. And that's how she closes a lot of hers. Or she might say expect success. That's great stuff. Uh, you know, so fantastic stuff, you guys. And Gail as a testimony to how well, so she's using send out cards. And, and as a testimony to how well personal notes are working for her, she says uh, that she's now doing 100% referral based business for the past eight years. Uh, and she's getting great uh, feedback or, you know, great response from her personal notes. You guys, it really does work, but you have to work. It's like anything else in your business. If you work the system, the system will work for you. If you don't work the system, well, I, I love it when somebody says, well, I wrote a couple of personal notes and, and I didn't get anything out of this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. like, like, really? <laughs> like, you thought that was going to work, just writing a couple of them, huh? And uh, so well, that means it's be, is it, are the stats on personal notes similar to the stats on like farming? So, you know, they always say don't do a farm unless you're willing to commit to like a year's worth of farming. Right. So if you're going to send out notes, you probably need to like be very consistent with sending them out. You know, how often would you try to hit somebody in your note sending sphere with a note during the year? So first and foremost, you're, you're, you're right in that it takes time for these things to really start to pay off, but it's not nearly as bad as farming because generally speaking, the reason you're sending somebody a personal notice is because you just had an interaction with them or there's someone you know, or there's someone you're doing business with currently. So generally speaking, you'll get better response from personal notes than you will from, from farming, but you're right about farming. Farming can take, you know, nine to, well, really nine to 16 months oftentimes before it starts to really pay off. Personal yeah. notes pay off much sooner. By the way, Lisa Tran, I saw that uh, you were trying to tag Julie uh, in, in the post here, and you'll need to add her to the Lab Code Agents group uh, in order for her to see your tag, just FYI. Um, but, and I noticed that uh, for some reason, and if, uh, I don't know if my team is watching, Dan, could you give me a favor? Could you send a message over to Madison uh, or Tara, reach out to them, let them know that for some reason that uh, URL is not working, the clubwealth.com forward slash, oh, you know what? Looks like I freaking typed mm -hmm. it in. Yeah, it's a small typo. Yeah, small it typo. Is, Welcome amazing. to being Michael Hellickson. That's exactly right. So <laughs> do you want me to type it for you? Do you have it here? Okay, we're going to try this one more time. Let's see if I got that right that time. Apparently, I can't type very well. Oh, look at that. It actually worked that time. Imagine that. If I get it right, then uh, I don't. it doesn't mess up. All right, so here's the deal. So, you guys, personal notes are important. They're important to be very, very consistent with it. Um, but here's the thing, understand that even if you're completely inconsistent about it, the times that you use the notes will make the stuff that you're doing more effective. So let's talk about, and again, there's an efficiency and there's effectiveness. Effectiveness is how well does it work? Not how, 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 how much of my time does it take to make it work? So let's use an example. I go on a listing appointment. I'm competing with multiple agents. That's a great opportunity for a personal note. Uh, I hold a client event. After my client event, uh, I want to reach out to the people that came to my client event, thank them for coming. Personal notes, great opportunity there. Gail, I would love for you and others, if you guys could type in, what are the points at which you guys send out a handwritten personal note? Now, I'm going to tell you what's really powerful. If you want to go crazy with your sphere of influence and you really want to blow up your sphere of influence, so we talk about four times a year doing client events, right? So you can do four client events per year. Before each client event, you're going to call every single person in your sphere of influence and invite them to your client event. That's number one. Number two, with your sphere of influence, you guys, I want you to think about this. Every time someone has a birthday, what do you do on Facebook? What well, does everybody do on I Facebook? Happy yeah, birthday. Yeah, they type in happy birthday. Yay, right? And you're like, woohoo, I got 3,000 of those. I can't remember who sent the happy birthday over to me, right? 
Like truly, like admit it, Noel. How many people do you remember that that wished you a happy birthday on your birthday through Facebook? And and be on, being honest, it's too many to remember them all, right? I think you missed mine. I did make a note of it on my death list, but <clears throat> the rest I can't remember. <laughs> See. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. And so here's the deal. So if you want to get noticed, if you want people to remember you and you want to really build that connection, first and foremost, on somebody's birthday on Facebook, don't freaking type in happy birthday. Send them a video of you singing happy birthday to them, or at the very least saying happy birthday to them. Then follow it up with a handwritten personal note that you send to their office. Now, why would you send it to their office? If you, if you have the office address, always send it to the office. Why? Well, because they're for sure going to go there. They're for sure going to be the ones to get it as opposed to a spouse opening it up at home, tossing it. That, that's all correct. Yes, that's all correct. And there's more. So here's the next that's thing. During work hours? I don't know. Well, but, here's, but who's at work? You and them, hopefully. <laughs> and other workers, right? But there's other people that they work with that are there as well. You send a handwritten personal note. They're reading your handwritten personal yeah. note. It's yeah. laying around on your desk. Somebody comes up and says, hey, what's that? I'll tell you, this is especially cool. Like if I've got a really good client, like at, at the end of a transaction, or better example, someone sends me a referral. If I get a referral, man, I'm hitting them in multiple ways. I'm saying thank you to them in multiple ways. I'm gonna video, I'm gonna do a video text message, I'm gonna do a video Facebook message, I'm gonna send them a handwritten personal note, and I'm gonna send them cookies to their office with balloons coming out of the top. So that if now it goes to their office, they everybody at their office sees the balloons, they see the cookies, they get to share the cookies with people in their office, they're the big hero now. Yep, yep, totally. Actually, one of my one of my agents, he started doing that with flowers on every closing. He was trying to get more people at his wife's work office, right? So he sent his wife flowers every time he had a closing saying thank you for putting up with me on this deal that's brilliant right especially yeah. because now everybody at work is saying who sent you flowers yeah yep. right and then yep. the best response to that is it was my boyfriend don't tell my husband no i'm kidding don't do that <laughs> okay. so that said uh amrita asked a great question she says should these notes be branded on my to my real estate business or not branded at all uh, and I would say this on the inside, it's okay if it's branded to your real estate business, but I would make sure that it was only like, if I, as I, as I pull the card out of the envelope, I should not see your brand yet. I should have to open it up. I open it up and I can see your brand at the bottom, but I'm already reading at this point because I can see that somebody hand wrote the note. I would not want my brand present until that moment. And, and, and at that point it's fine, but it, but it's subtle and you just don't, the worst thing you can do, whether it's on a call or you know in a in a personal note the worst thing you can do is ask for referrals and people are always like oh no i should always ask for referrals and oh but don't i want to use the colombo clothes and after everything i do shouldn't i say oh by the way if you were and by the way this has to be in an irish accent apparently I'm not sure why <laughs> but do i say every time oh by the way if you were thinking of buying or selling a home or had a friend or family member who was do you have a realtor you'd refer them to lame. oh my cheese ball what's that i said lame it is. It's totally wow. self-serving. Stop it. Like quit doing that. What you should instead do is really make it about them. Actually care about them. Quit worrying about you. It doesn't freaking matter. Go out of your way to bring them value. Make it all about them. It's their birthday. Who cares if they send you a referral on their birthday? Jeepers, right? Like they know you're in real estate. You don't have to cram it down their throat. Uh, you know, do we want to make sure that we in other ways are in front of them as a professional? Absolutely. That's what Facebook targeting and retargeting is all about. That's a great way to keep your brand in front of them. But when you're just trying to connect with somebody and build a relationship with them, it's not about your freaking brand. If every time I called Noelle up, I said, Noelle, is it time? Are you going to let me help you get to 500 transactions a year? Like, what's she going to, eventually Noelle's going to be like, dude, like, I get it. I know all of my buddies are guys that coached with you in the past. That's how they got to where they're But it's, I, I didn't know, know that that was going to be part of this. <laughs> right? Like what happens when you hear that? It's like, oh my, so serving, gosh, that's icky, right? Like it just feels gross. Like, you guys, you got to stop doing this. It's, I, I say this all the time and I want you guys to think about this. Noel, and you've heard me talk about this before. Mm -hmm. It's like when you go on a blind date, right? You show up on the doorstep, you knock on the door. And if the guy right then and there just dives in for the kiss, what's your reaction? Like Noel's like, yeah, I mean, no, no, not really, right? 
What's, what's your response? Well, I never really went on a blind date. Like I had to see first. <laughs> uh, you're, we get it. You're a Facebook stalker. We know that. So that being said, though, let's assume yeah, that you're no, on a blind date. Don't go if, right in for the kiss. No, nobody does no. that. Freaking take me to dinner, buy me some flowers, bring me some value, do something first, but don't dive in for the gifts. And here's the problem. Most real estate agents, seriously, most real estate agents are trying to make out with people on the front porch. Stop it. Stop it. It's not helping you, right? It's just gross. What you need to do is you need to develop that relationship. You need to make sure that they understand that you genuinely care about them. And if you don't genuinely care about your clients, maybe you should think about a different business, right? Maybe you should learn a new script. Here's a good script for those people that don't care about their clients. Here you go. You ready for this? Would you like fries with that? That's a great script. If you don't care about your clients, just you know, learn how to say, would you like fries with that? Because you're going to be working at McDonald's before long. So, all right, that said, uh, and yes, Diane, you're right about the, uh, the Irish show, by the way, uh, Columbo closed script. Yes. Um, all right. So let's go back through here. I'm looking at questions in the Facebook posts and I see them. Rita says we are proposing, but we need to spend the time dating them. That's exactly right. Stop asking them to marry you right when you first meet them. Um, and Gail, I love what you posted there. Uh, she's got, okay, here's some of the reasons why Gail, um, is, is sending out a personal note, new grandchild, new home. They got a promotion. They got a wedding. They received an award. They had a graduation. They adopted a kid. They've, uh, they, uh, went on vacation. They just, you know, just because there was a thank you for something they did. Happy birthday. Congratulations. Sympathy. Um, love new job. It's a holiday, new business, whatever. Guys, these are all great reasons to send someone a personal handwritten note. So, Take the time to do it. Find excuses to do it. And you'll find, and it's really easy to do too, right? One of the things you can do, and this is Ninja, and if you guys haven't done this already, I want you to think about this. First and foremost, have you friended everybody that's in your sphere of influence on Facebook? Now, I'm going to assume for a moment that you have. Then what I want you to do is I want you to specifically take a look at your A and A plus clients, and let's define this. An A client is anyone who has done business with me or sent me a referral. An A plus client is anyone who's done multiple referrals, multiple transactions, or a referral and a transaction or more, right? So any combination of multiple referrals and transactions. Now I want you to think about this. On Facebook, you can create groups within your contacts on Facebook. So I want you to create groups for your A and A plus and even your B clients. And now what you do is when it's time, if, you're, if you've got some time and you're sitting at an open house and you're kind of bored and you want to you know, screw around on Facebook or something, don't just screw around on Facebook. Go in and look at the posts for your A clients and your A plus clients. Find out what's going on in their life and write them a quick note about it. How tough is that? And you know what? If you don't have the time to do it, have your assistant do that. And if you don't have an assistant, write this down. If you don't have an assistant, you are one. Um, and uh, it's not the same as you can't really do that with videographer, right? You can't say if you don't have a videographer, you are one. It's not quite the same. Well, you have to be taking the videos first. But I have a videographer. I know. That's why I said that. I was just giving you a hard time. <laughs> so not only does Noelle have an assistant, she's got a videographer as well. Because uh, she's big time. We'll be it's, it's Noelle oh, big time. Oh, I'm into this. <laughs> Plug your ears for this part. <laughs> That's your new nickname. It's going to be Noel Big Time Nielsen. I, I, I have an idea of notes, too, that uh, we haven't talked about. But as somebody that is a team leader or a broker or trying to attract agents, I actually personally have received notes, and it always goes a long way, from other brokers trying to get my attention or from coaches trying to get me to join them or from agents wanting to join or vice versa. And so it might be a great way to attract people onto your team too. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You bet. And that's the thing. And who are, if I'm a team leader, who are my A plus plus clients? Think about that for a second. Yeah, who are agent. the most important clients on my list? Your agents. 100%. Absolutely. 100%. That's, you have to understand that. Okay. So Leo asks, what does the cover of the note look like? Honestly, plain white is fine. It doesn't have to look like anything. It could just be literally plain white. So they got to open it up to see what's on the inside. That's totally okay. 
it, because once they've opened up, see, that's the thing. The first thing we got to do is, and you want to, don't do it in a postcard. I mean, don't get me wrong. Postcards are better than nothing. I'll take a postcard over nothing all day long. Um, but what you want to be able to do is when you open up, hang on, I got to mon monkey around with this, get it back in the envelope here. And my dexterity is not very good today. All right. So I receive it. It looks like this. I pull it open. Now this one here, it has a little quote on it, right? Great. That's awesome. A little quote's fine. That's nothing wrong with that. But you know, the quote, I'll be honest with you, kind of tells me this is from a business, right? Then I open it up and there's my personal note. And then this person happened to put their business card in there. This was from Jennifer. Uh, and I always pronounce this wrong. Jennifer, I'm sorry if I butcher your last name, but it's uh, Gio Venzano. Uh, uh, Gio Venezano. Veniz ah, see, I totally butchered her last name. She's in your market, Noel. Um, FYI, she's with, what's, what's that? RG, right there. Oh, there oh, I should go after her. I'm going to tell Mike and Long. Good luck. She wrote me a personal note talking about how great Long and Mike are and how she can't, she's they so lucky. I'm yeah. just kidding. They are pretty awesome. Um, but my point here is, you guys, your note, it's not about what the note looks like on the inside. And, and that's a great question, Leo. I'm glad you asked it. Um, I really don't want you to get hung up on that. What I want you to focus on is making sure that you get them to the point where they see the handwriting. Um, so don't put anything on the outside of that note that looks professional, because as soon as they open it up, they're like, oh, this is some solicitation. Pff, garbage. They won't even read the note. You can actually find great bulk uh, note cards on Amazon that are just like nice little note cards with some kind of design on the outside of them and you can buy them in bulk and just go that route. It's simple, clean, nice looking. Now, if you're going to do send out cards, I'm going to, I'm going to put a plug out there for send out cards. If you're, and by the way, we have some information about them on the blog post as well. So go to the blog post and we'll get you connected with Gail and we'll get you taken care of. But, but one of the things I do like about what they can do with send out cards is when I, when I open the card, the first thing I see on the card can be a picture of the person, right? So when they see their own picture on there, it's something from their Facebook or whatever. All of a sudden they're like, whoa, 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 what's this? Okay. That's me. I like me. So that's good so far. Right? Because right. yeah. what do people like more than themselves? Not much. Right? Well, and it works. I, I had an agent that got one of those here and it sat on his desk for forever. It did. Because yeah. he was like obsessed with this card that he got. So here, I'll, give you, I'll give you a perfect example that's close to home, Noel. So when I had when I had Mike and Long speak at our last event, uh, we had a poster of Mike. Uh, and it was Mike in his, <laughs> so he was in his Backstreet Boys pose, right? Just like this, like, yeah. And you know, you could, you didn't even have to have a radio on. You could hear the music in the background. Dun, 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 dun right? I mean, you could totally hear, you know, boy band music playing in the background. And uh, so we took that poster and we sent it to some folks in his office and they started playing, let's post this all over the office. And people were taking pictures with it. People were posting it on Facebook and it became a thing, right? Because it's him, it's personal to him. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, that's one thing that is very powerful about send out cards. Uh, so I do like that about them a lot. So, yeah. all right. Any other thoughts on note cards? Any other questions that you guys have? Here, here's the big key, you guys. Just do it. Don't overcomplicate it. Just do it. Go to clubwealth.com forward slash personal notes. Download the little checklist there. Um, we've got links on there. There's places you can get personal note cards. Uh, you know, if you want, to, depending on what kind you want, there's lots of different uh, options out there that are great. Uh, don't overcomplicate it, though. Keep it simple and uh, just do it on a regular basis. And you'll find it will help you be more effective in your business. Yep, so. I totally agree. Love it, love it. Well, thank you for the information. Super useful. I'm going to forward it out to my whole team. I love it. Oh, and you know what? Diane, thank you for that, by the way, Noel. It's nice of you to say that. I appreciate that. Diane just asked the question, what's your opinion about putting your business card in with the note? Um, I would avoid it, honestly. Uh, what I would rather see is your logo at the bottom of the note and your phone number right there next to your logo, like embed it in the note. So it doesn't, you know, so it just looks like, well, it was there. So I just sent it that way. Anyway, it wasn't on purpose. It just happened to be on the card that I'm using. Um, and, uh, but the, the problem is when you, once you put the, the card in the note, it, it changes the nature of the note. And we don't want to change the nature of the note. We want to make sure they know the note is about them and it's about us caring about them. Uh, and yes, you're right, Diane, dollar stores have great note cards for cheap, like a dollar, I think, for less, because so, it's a dollar store. That's how they work. 
I'm telling you, like I figured this out, but no, but you're right about that. And we used to get, uh, what we used to do is we used to get white note cards from the dollar store and we'd run them through our printer and we would just print on the inside bottom of the card. We would print our logo and our phone number and our email address. Uh, I, I think I had logo, phone number, email, and uh, website were on the bottom of the card, but they were very low key. It wasn't like in your face or anything like that. Uh, if they wanted that information, it was there for them, but it really didn't it really wasn't the the point of the card and they could tell that. So anyway, there you go. Well, these are great ideas. Everybody get out there, do this, write five notes today, write them and then check in that you wrote them. Keep yourself. Yeah. Calm. It's a calm I note. would love to hear some success stories. In fact, would you guys do me a favor? Those of you that are on Facebook right now, I would like you to type in, like, give me a specific example of when you sent a personal note and got a response. Just type into your, just, just give me an idea of, hey, I sent a personal note to this person and they gave me a response. I'll give you an example. When I was brand new in the business, I was 18 years old and I sent a personal note. Uh, I'd, I'd gone, I was, I uh, can't remember where I was. I was at the store. I was buying something at the store and I met this gal at the store. She happened to be the manager of the Fred Meyer there. And um, I just, after I was done, I, you know, I thought I had a great experience with her. So I got her business card and I went home and I sent her a handwritten personal note. Here I am, this 18-year-old kid. I have no idea. I, I can't tell my head from a hole in the ground, man. I have no idea what I'm doing in real estate. I sent this gal a note. I end up listing her house, right, from a personal note. Like, and it, dude, I was an 18-year-old kid. But she's like, I've never received a personal note from a real estate agent before. Right on. All right. It works. So I love it. Oh, and uh, Gail saying she custom brands the back of the card. Um, and so that's a great one, too. All right, so anyway, type those stories in. I would love to see your stories and I'll certainly respond uh, in the Facebook feed here in Lab Coats. And uh, other than that, guys, get out there, do it. Like Noel said, just go write five personal notes today. Call it good. Don't make it overcomplicated. All right, thanks for coming on. As always, super entertaining. <laughs> Have an awesome day. Right on. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you later.